eugenics makes total sense. Get the weaker people out of the way, get handicapped people out of the way. Do all people have equal dignity? Not if there is no God and if evolution tells the whole story, because we are, have evolved to different levels of the evolutionary cycle. If there is no God, eugenics makes total sense. Get the weaker people out of the way, get handicapped people out of the way, get people who are just handicapped in whatever way, get them out of the way because they are a drain on the limited natural resources that we have. So what the scriptures does is say baloney. All human beings, regardless of their IQ, regardless of their talents or lack thereof, have equal value because they all are created by God to reflect the character of God in the way they live loving lives, good lives. Slavery is wrong because slavery is dehumanizing a person who has innate intrinsic value. Secondly, slavery is wrong because it's a classic example of sin, of basically saying, God, get out of the way. I'm going to define right and wrong. So, Matt, it's great if you want to say slavery is wrong. I happen to agree with you. The Bible obviously agrees with you. But remember, Matt, if there is no God, it's just a personal opinion. It's just a prejudice. It's just a bias that Matt Dillahante has. Guess what? I'm convinced that slavery is wrong, not because I'm an educated white guy who thinks that slavery is wrong. And I've progressed to this level on the evolutionary ladder that makes me superior to others. No, the Bible says slavery is wrong because all human beings have equal value and dignity. And so, Christ died for all of us. And when it comes, Matt, to you saying, oh, God says all that Israel does is right. Come on, Matt, read the Hebrew prophets. You know very well, Matt, that God used first the Assyrians and then the Babylonians to judge the Israelites for their sacrificing babies, for their immorality. So please don't give me this line that Israel is God's pets. If that was true, then why did he sweep all the Israelites into captivity, first at the hands of the Assyrians and then at the hands of the Babylonians? Well, first of all, this is not remotely an answer to the question that I asked. I, the question I asked is, get, given the, all the foundations that you provide, how does that apply to someone who does not, who is not a, a Christian? who does not believe that the Bible is true. So, so basically, your entire case for biblical slavery being moral is a particular interpretation on your part of the Bible. Now, we may or may not agree on the interpretation, but all I was asking was, if there's someone who does not agree with the Bible, either your version or somebody else's version, how is that in any way a demonstration that it's wrong? You can disagree with whatever you want to. I can disagree with whatever I want to. The question is, if you're going to put yourself in a position of judging the Bible and the Bible's morality, then you better have a pretty good explanation of what's the basis of the morality that you're using to judge the Bible's morality. No, see, that's, And I have not heard that from you. So first of all, that's still not an answer to my question. And second of all, nobody has to have a better explanation than God said so in order to object to the things that you say God said, because I have no evidence that God said anything. All right, fine, Matt. It's real simple. You know, I often hear people say, God says it, I believe it, that settles it. You know, there's an alternative, Matt, to that line of thinking. Yes, and there's the God says is, it, that I settles said it. it. I believe it, that settles it. Oh, that's not and the my alternative. My point is, that's the heart of sin. The heart of sin is me playing God, me saying, God, my opinion is more correct, more moral, more right than your opinion. I get and that. You can go that path. I go on that path at times myself. But let's be real honest, the game that we're playing. I, I, I'm trying to be real honest the game we're playing. I keep asking a question that you don't answer. How is this binding on anybody who is not a Bible-believing Christian? Well, obviously, I, mean, I would think you'd be able to answer that question yourself. It's not I would like for you to answer. Not, Why is it I have to ask three anybody. times, Cliff? If, if you're an atheist, you're not going to accept that the Bible speaks the truth, and so you're going to live your own life. Great. And God has given you the gift of freedom. Great. But if there is a God, if you're wrong that there is no God, if indeed in reality there is a God— who ultimately will judge us, then you're in a real jam, Matt. I'm not with regard to sleep. And have to I'm answer him. But if there is no God, Matt, when I die, I become fertilizer. And when you die, you become fertilizer. And that's it. So that's yes. obviously the way it is, Matt. And, and so if there because, is no God, we all die and we're fertilizer. So you're not going to have to answer to God. Neither am I. But I if there it. is a God, then you're going to have to answer to God for the decisions you made and the way you treated people. So am I. If you enjoyed that especially juicy clip, don't forget to hit subscribe so the algorithm knows what to serve you more of.